All right, today we're going to talk about uh, the Johnson years of the Vietnam War, getting us from 1964 to 1968. Now, Johnson comes into the presidency after the, the assassination of John F. Kennedy, and he inherits an extremely unstable situation in South Vietnam. The government of South Vietnam is in turmoil after the uh, the coup that overthrew New No Dinh Diem, um, and following that, there will be re repeated coups of, of of subsequent administrations. There's growing communist control of regions of South Vietnam, uh, particularly in the rural areas. Uh, supplies from the Ho Chi Minh Trail are flooding into Viet Cong forces in South Vietnam. And the Gulf of Tonkin resolution following this Gulf of Tonkin incident will provide that legal basis for the escalation in Vietnam that Johnson is looking for. And he begins that in March of 1965 with what is known as Operation Rolling Thunder. This is a, a major strategic bombing campaign of North Vietnam that would last for three years. In fact, more bombs will be dropped on North Vietnam during Operation Rolling Thunder than in the entire European theater of World War II. The, the plan of Rolling Thunder was to lift the morale of the government of South Vietnam, to weaken the North and support the, the Viet Cong fighters in the South, um, to force the North into a negotiation. Um, the early campaign, though, proved to be ineffective. Johnson refused to allow his Air Force to, to do what was known as unrestricted bombing um, that, that the military had been calling for, uh, the bombing of civilian centers in, in the city of Hanoi, for example. But even the bombing that was done will drive anti-war protests in the United States and around the world. Uh, protest movements grew out of American universities, like you see here at the University of Michigan. Public support for the effort in Vietnam would weaken as reports of heavy civilian casualties will, will come out of North Vietnam. And the international community will start to criticize the United States as the UN General Secretary U Tant will publicly criticize American bombing campaigns in Vietnam. Rolling Thunder is ultimately a failure. It doesn't meet its goals. Johnson's attempt to start negotiations fail as the North refuses unconditional negotiations. Neither side was willing to compromise. The, the North wouldn't talk until the bombing stopped and the Americans wouldn't stop the bombing until the infiltrations to the South had stopped. So this bombing campaign is not meeting the Americans' goals. Strategic bombing is far less effective against uh, under-industrialized states or unindustrialized states like North Vietnam. Um, North Vietnam was not reliant on heavy industry as they were getting their materials from outside, from China and the Soviet Union. North Vietnam already has a basic infrastructure and transportation system. Um, North Vietnam Army, the NVA, had minimal needs and, and, and expectations. These guys had been fighting wars since the, the Japanese invaded in 1941. The infiltrations across the Ho Chi Minh Trail would actually increase um, during, uh, during the bombings of Rolling Thunder. North Vietnamese air defenses, largely supplied by the Soviet Union, were quite impactful in, in bringing down American planes. Over 700 American jets are gonna be shot down over North Vietnam, leaving hundreds of American pilots as prisoners of war. The Americans would also be bombing some targets in South Vietnam and Cambodia and Laos. And this would begin to erode American public support in South Vietnam. Now, along with the bombing campaigns of Rolling Thunder, the United States is gonna inject ground forces into Vietnam beyond just the 16,000 advisors that had existed before the Gulf of Tonkin incident. In March of 1965, the United States is gonna send the first combat Marines into Vietnam to defend air bases. What starts as known as the exclave strategy, where the US troops would only go within 50 mile radiuses of, uh, of the air bases, would quickly be abandoned and American soldiers would begin to go venture further in country. With the US uh, increasing its numbers, the Americans began to take a, a heavier load in this war rather than the Army of the Republic of Vietnam. By July of 1965, with the encouragement from Secretary of Defense Robert McNamara, the United States will send even more ground troops into Vietnam 
and for the first time authorize independent military actions with the hopes of pushing the communist forces to what ended up being a mythical breaking point. We see here very clearly the escalation of Vietnam in the Vietnam conflict from 1965 to 1968. In 65, there were about 100,000 troops in the beginning of 1965. By the time we get to the end of 1968, we've got over 500,000 troops in South Vietnam. This is large American engagement forces doing uh, battling against a guerrilla army of Viet Cong fighters and some North Vietnamese regulars with no clear front lines in the combat. The United States is, is fighting what we call a war of attrition in South Vietnam, measuring the, the success of the war through body counts rather than through control of actual territory. But this body count strategy was quite unreliable. Um, as one American veteran said, if it was dead and Vietnamese, it was Viet Cong and the number got counted. So the, the numbers that, uh, that American officers were reporting were often unreliable. Even still though, the communists were suffering tremendous losses, but the United States underestimated the willingness of the North Vietnamese and the communists to, to handle tremendous losses. The United States would go out on search and destroy missions in South Vietnam. The, the goal was to, to hunt through South Vietnam to try to find and eliminate communist base camps in the rural areas. American artillery fire and air support of ground operations would result in ultimately two thirds of all bombs dropped during the Vietnam War to be used in South Vietnam. American helicopters will provide air mobility to bring troops and supplies, uh, but guerrilla fighters had excellent ground mobility. They knew the terrain and they had an intricate system of tunnels all throughout Vietnam uh, to move from one place to another. They also, in many cases, received support from the peasant populations, either through legitimate support or because of, of intimidation tactics that the Viet Cong used against peasant populations. In order to clear the, the, the jungle um, from, uh, from the terrain, the United States would use herbicides like Agent Orange to defoliate, to take the leaves off of jungle trees. Uh, this turned out to be a, a carcinogen that we would learn about in, in the years after the war. Um, and uh, many American veterans of the war and many more Vietnamese would suffer from higher cancer rates and birth defects due to the use of this chemical in Vietnam. The war of attrition is also a failure. By 1967, nearly 200,000 communists had been killed but this quest for body counts was not gaining any territory or denying the enemy of support from the Ho Chi Minh Trail. Unexploded bombs and mortar rounds would give the guerrilla fighters explosives that they could use against the Americans. Extensive bombing in the South would kill civilians and disrupt agriculture, leading to a massive refugee crisis as, 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 country, as rural refugees moved into uh, urban centers. All the while, debates in Washington, D.C. are going to grow about the continuing war effort. Johnson, not wanting to lose Vietnam to communism, continued to escalate forces while providing to the American public positive reports about the success of the war effort at home. In November of 1967, American general in command of Vietnam troops, uh, General William Westmoreland, stated uh, publicly to the media that we are nearing the end, that the, we can see the light at the end of the tunnel in the Vietnam War. And then the Tet Offensive came. Tet Offensive in January of 1968 was a communist uh, attack against dozens of American and South Vietnamese bases and cities, um, all coordinated on this, this Tet holiday, the Vietnam New Year. The goal of the Tet Offensive uh, was to, to overcome vast losses that the, uh, the communists were dealing with and to launch a last offensive that could drive the war into a, a period of favorable negotiations for the North. This was hoping to stimulate uh, uh, popular uprisings in the South, to disrupt the Republic of Vietnam's government, and to force ultimately an American withdrawal from the war. The plan was to lure American troops into the countryside with some, some, um, some uh, 
uh, tactics that would draw those troops out, uh, leaving urban areas and bases vulnerable. Then dozens of simultaneous attacks would be launched on Southern Vietnamese cities and air bases. The effects of Tet, almost a complete surprise. The, the Americans and the South Vietnamese were not prepared on this holiday, which was typically a quiet period in the war. The Americans had underestimated the communists' ability to organize and wage this type of war. But it was ultimately a failure for the communists, right? They, they were not extremely well coordinated throughout. Um, they didn't have reinforcements uh, after the initial attack. There was no popular uprising that happened. The Army of the Republic of Vietnam fought effectively alongside American troops. Communists were driven out of any ground that they had gained, any territory that they had taken uh, during the Tet Offensive. They were pushed out within days and they would suffer massive losses. Uh, 30,000 of their invasion force of over 80,000 would be killed during the Tet Offensive compared to 3,500 American and Arvin troops. But the Tet Offensive did stop the pattern of escalation from the United States. After the Tet Offensive, the American public became more aware of the realities of this war and that the United States did not seem to be as close to victory as they were told by their government, that there was no light at the end of the tunnel. William Westmoreland, for his part, after the victories of the Tet Offensive by the Americans driving the, the communists back, called for more troops and an escalation into Laos and Cambodia to cut off the Ho Chi Minh Trail. Johnson refused. This is the, the idea that Tet stops the escalation of, of troops in Vietnam. And this really holds back the American military um, from, from pushing the communists back even further after Tet. The American media also will begin to take a more unfavorable view towards the war, uh, while misperceptions that Tet was a communist victory are gonna go largely unchallenged in the West. Walter Cronkite that you see pictured here uh, was America's most revered anchorman. He would suggest that the war in Vietnam was looking to be unwinnable and that it would be a, the best course of action for the United States to negotiate an end to the conflict in Vietnam. We'll be back next time with, uh, with the Nixon presidency and we'll wrap up the Vietnam War. We'll talk to you next time.